So, when we last gathered, the party became more aware of the developing situations outside of the entertainment district heading towards the unclaimed territory as a whole. Amidst their learning of what they could and could not do, they became aware that their destination was barring them of entry because they were not permitted as it was an extremely holy area that only the chosen few that were either not necessarily succumb but have given their unwavering loyalties to a god known by Alexander or if they had managed to defeat a holy dragon beast in combat to which they did in fact perform only to come to the realization that the dragon that they were engaged in combat with was an illusion as once the illusion dissipated the real thing then appeared before them and as exhausted as the party were as they prepared to engage in yet another battle the dragon addressed them and said there was no need the trial has been completed and you have been granted access to our holy area and with that, our story will continue. Low key, sigh of relief in Yashua's face. Drava, she she prepares to uh, fall backwards and take a seat. However, she comes to the re realization that she is standing atop water and she does not know whether or not if sitting down will actually plunge her into it. So she instead uses her staff to prop herself up. <laughs> and the Cyrus is going to speak up, uh, clutching her shoulder in exhaustion <sighs> so you mean to tell me that this trial of yours was nothing more than a waste of our time as we fought an illusion of you <sighs> and Taria responds with what you deem to be a waste of time as you put it was nothing of the sort in fact had any of you conceded or decided to not make it known your true intentions you would have failed and I not the illusion would have annihilated you but make of it what you will And as Atarius says that, they flap their left wing and a multicolored dusting flies out over the area and all of you are restored to full capacity. Eight. Get my bullets back up. I'm at zero. <laughs> so with that having taken having been taken care of uh, Ataria speaks up again and says that even though you have been granted the highest of permissions to have an audience with our god this does not constitute you to act in whatever manner you so please. Because Alexander is our god. An incredibly and immensely powerful one at that. It will be in your best interest to be on whatever level you have of 
best behavior. And any attempts of deception or ill malcontent will not end in you living to see another second. As either Alexander will enact judgment on you in that very moment or and if his monarchs will exact judgment upon you do let me know when you have your wits about you and I will summon the door to send you to him <sighs> Henry just whistles in the back. <laughs> uh, Yashua looks at Osiris with a concerned look on his face. The divinity is not going to burn you more, is it, if we go over there? It most certainly will. It all matters of how close I get. Uh, I think it's better if you stay behind then. What what purpose would that truly serve? I don't want you getting burnt alive. It's not as if I will... What's that term you want to use? Spontaneously combust. Or turn to ash. I will just become... Exhausted, and you, the longer I remain there and the closer I get, you may or may not become assailed by the sound of slowly burning flesh, as is a detriment of having a human body. If I remain as far away from as possible, I should be relatively okay. Well, where we're going is going to be high intensity of divine energy, so I think it's best for you to stay behind. Mm. We're not going to take long anyways. You say that, but every instance of you and yours mentioning that you won't take long is taking a substantial amount of time. It shouldn't bother any mortal like yourself, would it? No, but if you're going to say it won't be long, you should hold true to your statement. Ah, I can't argue with that. Do as you wish, I cannot. Well then, Henry, mm -hmm. I'm surprised you haven't asked the, this kind dragon how to perform said illusions. Uh, well, it wouldn't work like that. I already <laughs> have the illusion spell. It's not like he's going to change what I have currently. Never know. Never ask. Uh, okay. Henry runs up to the dragon. My eyes are gleaming with excitement to see what what's going to happen to him. Henry requests, oh, can you teach me better illusionary spells? A whip, please. 
for what benefit would that serve you? And before you answer that, <laughs> take into account that I am a divine being and you are not. The opposite of divine. <laughs> Uh, I just want better illusions. That is an insufficient reason for me to bestow any level of teaching upon you, child. I just want physical illusions. Unlike these ones that aren't really there. <clears throat> you wish to make them tangible? Yes. Mm. Return to me when you have further increased your current strength. And that is code for unlocking a side quest that you can perform when you achieve level 34. Nice, who? I'm level 22. <laughs> you see what happens when you just go up and ask? I'll put that there so you can put it in a note for you. Okay. Alrighty. <clears throat> Are there any other questions, interactions you all wish to have? Henry gets a gleaming eye. <laughs> looks at the dragon. Would you like to be my friend? Uh, Peering did he into just... your soul crystal. <laughs> By friend, you mean a half-hearted coded term of enslavement. To which... No, no, I no. I don't... I don't enslave nobody. Again, looking into your soul crystal. Which reveals the absolute and un an unfiltered truth. I decline. You also, as a mortal, a very strange mortal, but a mortal nonetheless, <laughs> you do not possess the strength to tame a divine beast, let alone befriend one. Hmm. You could see through him just by looking at his crystal? Yes. The crystal reveals all in its clear, pristine, untethered, unfettered, unmurky form. It is the truest version of you that is. Yashua is like so fascinated he starts expecting his crystal. Huh. I wonder what mine says about me. Henry looks at Yashua's crystal and says, It says that you're a robot. <laughs> Sniff. As a divine being, I can see things that most mortals are unable to see when it comes to soul crystals. And with yours, young. I'm creature, probably a strange existence. 
that you are. Yet, while you are whatever this construct I see before me is. But like I got shot in the back of the head when he called me a construct. You act and maintain thyself as if you were most other mortals with a strong sense of justice and determination. However, you have a severe lack of self-driven purpose as I can see that for the entirety of your life up until Shinryu struck you've known nothing but to receive and follow orders and you struggle with the idea of constructing your own orders Old habits die hard, I guess. And as for you, young lady, and Drava kind of flinches uh, in response because she wasn't expecting to be singled out, Ataria continues saying that while you have traveled a different road to your counterparts the drive to return to what you know rings stronger than most others that were brought here by the acts of Shinryu yet you still struggle with self-doubt and while you're yearning to bring out the truth in most situations rings high, you hide from your own personal truths, which is still a problem for you. Yet while at the same time, though you have suffered hardship upon hardship, you have yet to as the individuals from your dimension put it, throw in the towel. And Drava at first struggles to come up with the response, but she eventually says something along the lines of, I've never had someone tell me about myself in such a pure format before that I'm a combination of partially offended yet relieved to hear that all the same Natalia speaks up as a divine beast it is none of my concern how you feel about the words that come out of my mouth what matters is that you become aware of who and what you truly are and your feelings in the matter are irrelevant and as for you strange mortal your general aptitude and concerning lack of awareness for most situations is a peculiar feat in tandem with making a pact with the demon known as Diablos your determination given the subject matter is faulty at best and while catastrophic at worst no one can deny that when the situation calls for it resolves are discovered yet it would be in your best interest to have 
least a modicum of concern for yourself and your allies. Henry just nods and is thinking. I'm scratching the back of my head and saying, well, damn, she read us like an open book. Drava and Osiris accidentally say at the same time with those soul crystals we and then when Drava says we and Osiris says you that's when they stop talking at the same time but they end off with R an open book I chuckle at the idea and just say out just say, well, personally, I got nothing to hide, so this doesn't bother me one bit. Though it is reassuring to have someone with uh, divine knowledge to confirm some things for me. Hmm. Well, and this is Drava speaking. Well, we've already felled Eldritch Horror after Eldritch Horror have regularly engaged with espers and other divine-like beings. And given that our main objective is to defeat Shinryu, which is, as far as we know, is as strong as a god. This kind of thing was bound to happen at some point. Yep. Anyways, as much as I would love to talk about the topic, we should meet up with Alexander, though I am a little nervous about meeting with uh, a god. Ataria interjects and says, Fear not, unless you begin to show shines of disrespect, then you should become incredibly fearful. But, fear not, as Alexander is... He does not have a thirst for... chaos, as he is one of the many gods of order. I will then take your statement as you are ready to proceed. Well, are we all ready, everyone? Henry looks through his pocket and finds the... Oh, what was it called? Uh... It was the crystal, the one for Odin. The emerald crystal? Was it the emerald one? I think it said like I think I said it was a clear emerald, something like that. Yeah. Clear gem. You both spoke oh. at the same time. Say that again. Is it the clear gem? I believe so. Yes. Okay. So Henry pulls out the clean, clear gem and shows uh, the dragon. 
Do you know anything about this? I know that Odin resides within this crystal, yet it is interesting that you have this and have yet to be torn asunder, while at the same time, it is interesting that you can even physically hold this. Henry tell the dragon uh, how Odin stayed with him multiple times. You have been saved by Odin. That is a sentence I have not heard for hundreds upon hundreds of years. Young man, um, Yashua, was it? Yes. Your friend. Are you certain he's immortal? Uh... He was human where we came from. Or, sorry, uh, human plus. Hmm. When did you make your agreement with Diablos? After I got the crystal? After. Have you seen Odin exit this crystal, or have you been affected by his spirit? I wouldn't really know. There was a time where you were surrounded by a gust of wind. Yeah. Interesting. That may not be the Odin I personally know, but it might be one of his dimensional counterparts. So, you mean like Ifrit and Ifrita? Not exactly. In... In this world, I, I, personally, know of two Odins. One of which, the one I personally know, refuses to allow any creature, Esper, God, otherwise, to get anywhere near him spiritually, physically, or would not. As per as is per his his stalwart demeanor, as he truly believes that he can only attain perfection by himself and with his trusty steed Sleipnir. The other Odin that I am aware of was a. A guardian of sorts. And this guardian did everything within their power to make sure not a single soul suffered across the land. Yet, that Odin is strangely. What, what is the term? paranoid of being around other creatures. So I am going to make the wise decision that you are in possession of the other Odin's crystal. Not the one that I know. Is there any way for us to communicate with this one? No. Hmm. 
Guess she'll come out when she's ready then. Henry just holds the crystal tight. Roll... Wisdom, please. Wisdom. A ten. Mm. Let's see here. When you bring the crystal to your chest for a very, very brief moment, you feel the heartbeat of another creature and you hear a voice, but you do not understand what this voice is saying, what it sounds like. You just know that you hear something trying to talk to you. Can Henry try to understand it again? Not at this moment in time. Okay. Let me rename the clear gem. What name can I give it? Just Odin's crystal? Uh call it for for for, for now, call it Odin Beta. Odin Beta? Are we are ready to proceed? Yep, I asked everything I could. All right. <clears throat> so, upon hearing that, Ataria waves their right arm. And in the blink of an eye, a portal befe uh, appears before you all. All right. Henry? Be on your best behavior, please. Harry just smiles back. Drava, she... After, after seeing and hearing that, she shakes her head in despair and then briefly fixes her hair before going through the portal. But... Before she enters through, she takes a quick look at Cyrus and doesn't really say anything, but they exchange glances and then she walks through.
before going in the portal, I tap Osiris in the shoulder. We won't be long. I just walk in. You do that. And then after that interaction, uh, Osiris glides backwards and sits atop the cliff adjacent to where the water is. And as you all are traversing through this portal, you don't necessarily feel or see anything out of the ordinary as you are just floating listlessly through what appears to be a lot of physical white noise and it's almost as if this place that you are traveling through sits between reality itself as you think for a small moment that you might just be traveling to another world entirely based on how everything looks to you and within seconds the feeling <clears throat> the feeling subsides and you set foot in an area of which you've never seen before however looking around the space you see some familiar faces before you pay attention to what sits within the middle of the room oh god what the f We put our tokens here. Mm -hmm. And once you become fully aware of the presence before you, you feel an immense weight laying atop your shoulders. Henry just talks to Diablos. That's one ugly bitch. Alright, uh, yeah, let me let me zoom in to see what it looks like quickly. Hear me out, right? Uh, normally, I would agree with you. However, do yourself a favor and shut the fuck up. Please tell me that Alexander can't read my mind. If he wants to, he will. Oh, God. <laughs> so do yourself a favor. Because I know that he already knows I'm here. Do not talk to me unless you absolutely have to. You know what? It's your new best friend. Henry, are you trying to get yourself killed? I'm hearing this conversation because I'm, I'm like beside you and I'm trying my best not to shoot you right now. All Alexander has to do is move a single piece of his body to erase you. From existence entirely. And he just shuts up. <laughs> so with that conversation <clears throat> I haven't taken place. 
you all lay your eyes upon the god that is Alexander himself. You also see the um, excuse me. You also see those that greeted you when you entered the city earlier, being Zarin, Vin, Quinn, and Lin. All standing atop their own respective pillars, looking far, far more serious than they did when you spoke to them earlier. You also take into account of the four crystals surrounding this area that are shining brighter than anything you've ever seen before in your life up to this point in time. As, as Quinn addresses you all from her pillar, she says, Welcome. This is our god, Alexander. This is also your spire that you have been tasked to investigate. Kind of speechless at the moment. I, I, as I'm sure, this is when anyone manages to achieve an audience with our great, great leader Alexander. Most are taken aback and. Paralyzed with bewilderment, but as I'm sure that Ataria has explained to you all, have no fear unless you say the wrong thing, to which you better pray that you can avoid the four of us taking your life at the same time. I'm over here thinking how massive Alexander is. Okay, uh, before I continue on with dialogue, would you like to take a guess at how big I have Alexander to be? I'm going to take a guess he's bigger than a... F I don't know. Uh, let's see. The moon is... Two times bigger than Texas. Something around that size. Well. Let's say that. Within this room. You are correct. Oh shit. As for outside of this room. Let's. Just say that if you were to reduce the size of Jupiter by 15%, that's how big Alexander would be. Damn. Again, that's only outside of this room. He's... Literally, by every sense of the word, a celestial body. Uh-huh. Alright. <clears throat> Continuing on. Lynn then speaks to you all. From her pillar, weapons already drawn. And she says... Do your best to watch your tongue when you address him. He will answer any questions he deems fit necessary, but do not waste his time asking him foolish inquiries. Do I make myself clear? Andre just 
He looks away. I speak up and say, Crystal. Crystal clear. And at this point, Drava speaks up and asks, out of respect for this area, your god, and all of you, I am going to lay down my weapons where I stand as an act of respect. Is that okay? And before anyone else can say anything at all, Alexander, for the first time, begins to speak. And as he's in the process of speaking, you can hear and see steam come off of his body. You can see gears and other mechanisms begin to turn and crank and make a myriad of different noises. As you then hear a voice coming from where you think his mouth would be. Young one. Give your weapons to me. All of your weapons. As I will bestow upon you a gift. From a being such as myself. To you, the would be. Saviors and protectors of this dimension, as appointed by Korra himself. And once Alexander says all that, Drava's weapon, and subsequently. All of your main weapons, at least, are forcefully removed from your inventory as they now float in front of Alexander. And there appear to be an array of lights swarming and going through them and encompassing them. What's going through my mind right now is that the fact that he was able to forcefully materialize my weapon from the digitizer and just take it like that, just mind-blowing. Uh, please roll a... Charisma save. Oh boy. Uh, where is it? Uh, I'm gonna roll Drava's Alright Alright uh, All of you pass but what I was going to say that if you had failed uh, any rolls, you would have uh, visibly flinched, which would have prompted one of the four ladies to 
say, oh, it's okay. There is nothing to fear. In fact, you should be joyous that he is bestowing you with a gift. But, you won't pass, so nothing to worry about. <clears throat> <laughs> when he said charisma save, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> so. Moments after the light show ends. And the light fades away. Your main weapons now looked... Well, they now look considerably different as there are more mechanical parts that can be seen along them, but they have indeed changed form. And the items are returned to you in addition to a series of earrings. And I will put these in the chat for you all right now. That's one. I am more rolls for all the left earring. I'm copy pasting the other earring. Oh, we could wear both of them or just one? You got two ears, don't you? No, hey, man, I'm just asking. <laughs> and this is Some video game. games just allow us to use one ear. Back plus 400. That's your gun. Divine Rosary Staff... Right earring. Do we both get both weapons? Uh, or he gets the gun and I got the staff. You, uh, blah, 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 blah. you get the staff. He gets the gun. Okay. Even though I think it'd be pretty funny to see Asher running around with a damn staff. Dude, I will beat people up with this staff. <laughs> Uh, we received our weapons, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got the gun at the bottom. Like, give you plus 400 attack. No, like, in character, I'm, I'm saying. Yes. Okay. I instinctively inspect the weapon. Like, you know how militarized people inspect their weapon? Like, uh, looking through the sights, looking at the ammunition, looking at the barrel and all that. You mm -hmm. know, just weapon inspection. Yep. Just complete fascination. He didn't take my caliber, did he? No. Okay. Just the stuff. <clears throat> Not yet, anyway. Not yet, anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this slips out of Yashua's mouth. Because he's just so surprised by the weapon and just completely unaware that he says this, like, completely what? unaware he says this and just calls the weapon graceful. Oh, last week you gave us an item that was question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. What was that? You'll find out. Okay. Like, there's no description for it? Like, is it a crystal or something? You'll find out. Okay. Because in, in the caustic... Yeah. In the context of it being in your inventory, it is, and I mean this, literally a ball of question marks. Okay. Interesting. Like, it, it is so foreign, you can't even make out what it is. Or what it could right. be. Okay. So, 200 more. Magic attack. Seven hundred. 
20 more speed, 10 more speed. So I'm at 82. Five more intelligence. Which I would be at 62. One constitution. Divine Rosary Gun. For every stat of constitution is how much? I believe that is oh. 50 HP. 50. Yeah. And intelligence, every stat of intelligence was 35? 35 MP and I believe 40. 45 magic attack let me cite the book just to make sure i'm not telling you yes. the incorrect information oh is it 50 uh, stat breakdown intelligence is okay i got the numbers mixed up it's two magic attack and 35 mp two magic attack yep so was 10 MP was 35? Uh-huh. 35 times 5. Seventy-five. That should be 2001. And strength, dang. Should be at 75. 84 magic, 784 magic attack. That's per battle, four times a day. One wisdom. Two decks. Dude, this gun puts me directly at 300 speed. Nice. Oh, jeez. I have to still do the earrings. What? Does charisma give anything else? Gives you, you debuff resist. Debuff resist. So 15. And how much of that does it give? One point per level. Uh, yep. So I'm at 13. Joy. Okay. Oops. Oh, this gave us 10% AC now. Awesome. What gave us 10%? Originally, we always had 9% AC, but with the earring, it gives us 10%. Just gives us one more percent. Additionally, landing six different magic attacks on an enemy will cause them to be a quick venom. Do I have to precast the protection? Say that again. Do I have to precast the protection on the staff for an ally, or does it just activate? Uh, no. You can decide when you want to do that. Okay.
Can I cast that on myself or only an ally? It only affects allies. Oh, damn it. Unless you are the only one remaining in battle, to which, yeah, you can cast it on yourself. Or if you're fighting alone. Okay, so I got that earring done. Oh, I get it's eleven easy with these two earrings. Oh, okay. man! So I did the HP. I did the main. I forget to add the fit plus fifty or something. So let's see, Earth Shell Mist at the cost of 400. Then once per battle, you can create a thin veil of mist around you that can absorb up to 1,000 points of magic damage, which once. Bill disperses and restores 500 MP to all allies within 15 feet. Okay, so it only works for all allies. Hey, I could give you uh, magic resistance or magic defense and MP at the end of it. Benefits you. Sounds good. You sure about that? Yeah, it's what it says here. You can only cast the shell ability, abilities on yourself. At the cost of 400, you create a thin veil of mist around you. Yeah, mist shell. That's what I'm talking about. All we gotta do is just stand beside each other and just cast it. <laughs> Okay, maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding here. Because I had it... The way I have it written is that if either one of you cast Miss Shell, like, only the caster gets the uh, insert damage type resistance here. And it's not like, oh, you stand next to one and both of you get it. No. Well, it doesn't specify. That's why I was Around wondering if it works that way. So, 1,000 points of magic damage. And... Alright, let's look at Earth Shell. Opposite effect of... It it and restores 500 MP to all allies. Yeah, the MP part gets affected by everyone, but the damage absorb only affects the caster. Hmm... Opposite effect of magic. Instead of magic damage, physical range damage. Instead of MP being restored, it's HP. Cannot be activated at the same time by the same person. Nor can both effects be active by two different party members. Damn it! <laughs> hey, opposite. Riku was planning ahead. <laughs> Freaking Riku knew that we would try to break this the moment we got it. Oh, of course. So that gives... Yeah, let's go down this now. So now I have to add more defense. So I'm at 411. Or 11. Okay, I'm gonna... Let's remove Crystal Blaster, because I don't use that anymore. I don't have that gun anymore, either. Remove that. 
we're doing Poison cool. Lee, don't use that because everyday Cobra is not equipped. Armor class is HD, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. I had 13 there, so two more is 15. How do you have 13? I don't know. I had 13 there. I never touched it since the beginning. Unless you give him my... more armor class, Riku? No. Unless one of my equipment had it. It's, it's probably your gear. Because remember when I gave you all your uh, customized elemental stuff? I think it was my gear that gave me it. Long time ago. <sighs> 200 MP added. Two thousand three hundred MP. Plus fifteen health. Plus Michelle. Okay. I'm so lost right now because the Lux gear doesn't give me any AC. I don't know how you're getting AC from yours. Right. Eh, whatever. It's... Pop. Well... Mm. I don't care. I, I, cause like... I'm fast anyways. You have like... You have like food buffs and stuff and like achievement buffs that Henry currently doesn't have and if I look at his stuff yeah Henry's stuff doesn't have it either so it's probably your accessories and other things could be trying to look through it was one of my staffs uh not staffs armor gave it to me before My rope from the very beginning gave me 10. Hmm. Okay. That's where it was from. The Aether Laced Rope gave me 10. Then... I gives you 10 AC? Yeah. yeah that's I... retarded. Holy shit, that's so strong. I gave him starter gear so that he would be somewhere on par with you guys when he first yeah 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 yeah. Campaign. i get it now <laughs> you go like jesus christ a piece of rope just wrap that shit around you dude take the dragon brooch also gave it no didn't it was something else that gave me it too I think that's it. Uh, only thing I have to implement is the what's it called? Uh, pedal piercer. Let's add that in. There was something else. Was it Caliburg that gave me some? Mm. It was something recently gave me some too. Okay, so what's this? Uh, 4D14? Riku, how do I implement this one? This one's throwing me off a little. Uh, let me do... Ooh, wrong sheet. Whoops. Do this. Here. Here. So where it says damage, that's we would type the 4D... 16? 14? Yeah, yeah. Okay, damage. 1d14. It, what is it based on? Strength? Uh, 
deals both physical and magic damage to enemy. Oh, uh, fuck. <laughs> I don't know how to do this one. Uh, that Four. that part, uh, don't worry about it. Because where, where it says uh, type, you can just put in physical slash magical. How do I do that? Right up under damage where it says type. What? Where? Okay, I'm, I'm lost here. Ah, okay. No, but what's the damage roll going to be? Strength? Dex? Oh. Uh... It is based off of neither of those, so that part is okay, going to be so blank. Put, leave it, the little dash thing. Mm-hmm. And... So for damage, you put 4d14, type, physical, slash magic. Yep. Crit, you leave that empty, right? Uh-huh. That should be it, then. What's your attack stat? Uh, 794 with all the new gear equipped. And then what is a fourth of your MP? Uh... Good question. Let me see. Four hundred and sixteen. All right, and then this. Get this in here. Right. Yikes. What's the mana cost for that? 50? 50 MP and 5 of your ammo rounds. Ah, of my choosing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I definitely gotta have special bullets. Okay, so Mist Shell, how am I going to implement this? I think I'll add it in my Spells tab. That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, let's see. 1D1. Uh, what's it called? Mist. Uh, mist, <sighs> mist shell. Mist shell. Okay. Spellcasting ability. Spell, I guess. Uh, spell card. Duration. Leave that empty. Uh, range. 15 feet. Casting time. Eh. Like this, Riku? Yep. Awesome possum. Jeez. And lastly... Oh, my bad. Didn't mean to do that. Uh...
What was the other one called again? Earth, Earth shell. shell. Okay. Earth Shell. Since we both can be using these spells at the same time, we have to, you know, figure out when to use it. Mm-hmm. Especially since this is also a once per battle thing. Oh, is it? Okay. Alright. Um is the range the same? Mm-hmm. This counts as an enchantment magic, right? All right, I'm done adding the new spells. Alrighty. Uh, Henry, you good? I'm just doing my skills, but we can continue. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, continuing on past that point, once you all have finished examining and taking into account that uh, you just received a literal gift from God. <clears throat> I'm just admiring the gun right now. Alexander then speaks to you all again. So, children, young ones, for what is the reason that you are an Avenger. I feel, I feel like I'm going to die when I talk, dude. Um, saying that in character? No, 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 no. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm just I'm telling that to you now. <laughs> If I may, uh, we were given a task to investigate this divine tower for evidence, I suppose, of uh, of the interference with the board of directors. It was thought that this spire has something to do with uh, the board of directors and their schemes, but clearly that isn't quite the case. Originally, we were just going to come here, investigate, and leave, but so it appears to me you are a crossroad of which you are not aware of the correct road to take. And you venture here for the true road. And as my position. As the god that I am, I will direct upon you the correct path you need to take. Though, 
Form wurde. This path will not be plucked by any means, nor will it on the surface directly contribute to the trial that you face in the coming days. I look at Drava and I look at Henry. As in, if they're willing to hear it too. Drava maintains eye contact with Alexander, but she acknowledges that you've looked at her and she nods in response. Henry just nods. I let up. I take a deep breath. And then I just say, please tell us. Your resolve to establish is The individuals that have sent you here, one of which being a woman by the name of Francesca, that she chooses to go by, is in truth the Esper known as Ixiel. Ixiel was the original protector of this city known as Sterling. When the truth, it was never a city. It was a region. A region specifically crafted for other Esper kind. The reason that the region was divided so was due in part to Ixion's counterpart, Vaughn. Vaughn took issue and discontent with the way Ixion ran things as per the clashing ideology of how to rule. Ixion preferred to serve the people. Vaughn preferred the opposite. And as they fought, their battle tore the land asunder in such a manner that it was destroyed beyond repair, which then led to the different factions being what you know as the Entertainment District, the Cybernetic District, and the Agricultural District, two of which ruled by Iron Fist, and Ixion holds domain over the final. Additionally, the reason that this cult was formed was in no small part Shinryu's doing and Chaos. 
as I'm sure you are fully aware of the catastrophe that Kale so happily introduces the realm. And the danger that Shinri is on her own. Vaughn made a pact with both Shinri and Kale in exchange for causing all of these varying problems over the years for the sole purpose of cultivating souls as an offering to Shinri to accelerate the process of which he gains power. As for once Shinri has reached a sizable capacity, not only would he be forcefully awakened, he would also bestow an ample amount of power to Vaughn for his cooperation. In tandem to that, while you may believe that you have completely eradicated the cult, you will not. There are 12 individuals of which you have never seen whose power far exceeds the entirety of the cult on their own. They are known as the Knights of the Round Unity. Yet, this unity is the farthest thing from union that I have seen ever since my inception. When your trial comes to fruition, being the next outside my man, the next day or so, because within the space, time is frozen. As I can tell, I must explain to you that not only am I the god of order, I'm the god of time. If, at any given moment, I feel the need to bring them all to a halt, I will. If, for whatever reason, I need to reverse time, I will. And all this is only happening once. If I need to eradicate time itself, I will. But Vaughn and his knights are incredible in comparison to you. Incredible points of which you will likely be pushed to an ill of your life's channel when you inevitably engage in combat with them. Because, while, yes, you have been sensitive to gather evidence and anything to help you in your case, there is next to nothing that will help you, as your adversaries that want you dead have amassed an immeasurable level of false evidence, falsifying testimonies, as they have been crafted very uniquely and specifically targeted fear mongering articles of information and news, as you people call it. Designed to instill as much fear as possible into the servants of the domain that they reign over. Because, well, yes, the truth is important. In the eyes of 
justice. And a false sign, trial. The lies of the men outweigh the clarity of the few. I say this to you not to instill hopelessness, but to prepare you for what you inevitably have to suffer through to prove your worth. Additionally, it appears that you have a relic formed upon you. The one possessed by Diablos. Step forward. Henry slowly steps forward. <laughs> The cursed weapon that you carry upon your back lies on the ground. Henry places the Caliborg right here, right in front of him. Step forward again. Summon forth the apples. Buddy, he wants to talk to you. <laughs> say that Diablos without any interaction from you slowly <laughs> appears behind you and as he comes into full view the ladies quickly draw their weapons and prepare to strike Yet, you hear a different type of mechanical noise coming from <clears throat> coming from Alexander himself as they relax their battle positions yet are still poised to strike at a moment's notice. But then Diablo speaks up. Well, well, well. It's been a while. Friend. To what do I owe this misfortune of having to stare at your disgusting body all over again? Henry just glares at Diablos. Like, bitch, you just told me to be good and you're just fucking bad mouthing him? The most pleasure that I owe looking up in this bane of all existence and humanity in life itself. I am requesting your unfortunate presence. Not as a matter of antagonizing or to engage in combat on this day but just to confirm that you understand how dying you say so correct yeah I know I've known the whole time 
with the exception of my round, which I am going to assume that it's you know who again. Yes, it is them. And it appears that a certain priest that has upon equal strength as both of us has been resurrected. And you know what needs to be done in accordance with them, yes. Yeah, sure, push all your fucking problems on me again. Because you're too busy being a god looking over people, right? Just as I have my duties. Too you have your own role to play in all this. So does your host. So does his ours. And so does everyone else that decides on the territory of gods. But we all have our positions in this crisis because should anyone of the prime players in this fold whether it be you or Korra or any other else on the council or the overseas in fact everything will be lost. And after saying that, Diablos and Alexander proceed to very aggressively stare at each other. Neither is saying anything, but the longer that they look at each other, the more of their respective energies you can see begin to emanate from their bodies. Henry just looks at both of them and says, Can you guys cut it out? <sighs> Please roll... Roll persuasion and dexterity after saying that. Lance thrown at him. And dexterity. So, you say what you say to no avail. However, after saying that, you become aware of several sets of weapons flying towards you at breakneck speeds only for Alexander to stop them in their tracks. As he speaks up, my monarchs. Well, yes. The challenge is very, very far out of his position. His comment is not unfounded. As I will allow it this once, however, I will make it known again that your the owls and I have been quarreling for an 
incredibly old town. One we have constantly been at odds since our inception as he is the god of chaos and darkness and the antithesis to my existence. I am the antithesis to his existence. Yet, to the eyes of the unaware, it would, yes, just appear as two gods quarreling with each other. Yet for the sake of time, all what I needed to say to the animals has been said. And so for the first time, Several thousand millennia. We will work together to make sure that with a little interference from us as possible, that this problem is dealt with once. And will hopefully never return. Because wouldn't you like to know the sheer amount of souls that have been lost over the years? Yashua has a sorrowful look on his face, just mutters far too many. He says. Yeah, try not. <laughs> try several dimensions worth of souls. That's how many people have been lost over the years with Vaughn's stupid fucking plan. Oh, because that power-hungry, greedy little bitch decided to side with wrong people. Harry just turns around to Diablo. What? <laughs> and just looks at him, like, really? Is there a problem? Uh, yes. Then share the problem. You guys are fighting over a grudge? I was sides? This isn't the time for this, Henry. We got bigger problems to deal with. No, 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 no. No, no. no. Let me speak. Because. I'm pretty sure he missed the part where Vaughn is helping Shinryu and Chaos. I just want to make that clear. He very clearly missed that part. This is not a battle of sides and grudges. This is a battle of existence versus no existence. The BS going on between me and the robot? Different thing. It is in our nature as two opposing sides to fight. But this, this right here, right now, concerning your existence and everyone else's, Is not one side versus the other. It is the 
non-existent and complete eradication of all life. Because some fool decided years ago to take things into his own hands and get as many people as possible to understand that he wants to protect everyone and everything by enslaving everything. So no, Henry, this is not a matter of signs. This is a matter of the preparation of life. And as Diablos was aggressively lecturing you, with every other word that he spoke, he progressively grew in size to the point where he was as big as Alexander in combination <clears throat> excuse me, with many 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 stray strands of dark lightning shooting forth from his body some of which nearly hitting you he, and he just looks to alexander and says see he wants to help us it is not a matter of want it is a matter of he has to. Just in the same way that I have to. Yet, our capacities of hoping are different. As I am to remain here in my domain, do in part that even with the power of the divine celestial god that I am, the amount of time that I can remain outside of the space is very little. Do it part to the fact that outside of this space, my power as the God of Order and Time is diminished with every line of dimensions that Shinri takes for himself. Additionally, because of how precious a resource time is, while I can restore time, it is an incredibly difficult process just because of the fact that even altering a singular second can change the fate of all life. It is a process that I do not perform lightly. And because of the many, many, many lives and fates that I have to take into account when I perform this action. It is dangerous. Because if I were to own time to where this interaction would never have happened, I would, in a sense, have to create another timeline where this did not happen. And even as I've got time, and I will see all altering timelines is something that even I do not prefer to practice.
And he just looks at Alexander. And he understands the whole time thing. But he has one question for Alexander. And you see Henry's eyes glimmering again. Oh no. <laughs> you know where this is going, Riku? You're gonna ask him to be your friend, aren't you? Oh. Are you gonna ask for time powers? No, there's one power, there's one spell. Time stasis. Eh, pretty much time powers. It, it's that, the that, only that was that was my second spell. guess though. <laughs> that was the only time spell that I could learn. And you're you're talking about time and everything. I'm like, ah, perfect. <laughs> so Henry just shut. Uh, speaks, Alexander. Uh, God Alexander, can you bestow a spell for a time for our adventure? And he just looks up right into Alexander's big eye. You are asking. A question of which you do not grasp the full weight of. I ask Henry, are you asking him to teach you how to use stasis? And Henry just turns around, yeah, it could come in handy for our adventure. Uh, Yasha is like scratching the back of his head. Henry just bows down like knees on the floor, hands on the floor, like, bowing to Alexander, begging him to teach him. Can't you just learn how to slow Adam's I have, down? I have slow already. No, like, I'm saying in character, stasis works very similarly like this. You could just, you know, halt Adam's from moving. Henry it's... doesn't move from the ground, he's just still bowing to Alexander. <laughs> Stand to your feet. Henry gets up so quick. There, there is yet another gift that I want to bestow upon you. And I have already foreseen this. Question being posed <laughs> Yeah, she was not surprised when he said that. <laughs> I will remind you again, you do not understand the weight of the question you posed for me yet. Your bravery for asking the same question. To the, the god, god of time, time itself is something that I haven't seen in quite a while. In the back of Yashua's hand, head, he says bravery or idiocy. As a god, I am supposed to be polite, yet. I will go with the latter as, as my true feeling of the situation. Did he read my thoughts just now? <laughs> yeah. Oh. And Diabolos is gonna speak to you and he's gonna say... <clears throat> Did you miss the part where I said he can read your mind whenever he wants to? Harry is just smirking because he knows he was reading his while, mind. 
Well, you said that to Henry. I didn't know he was saying that to me. No, he, he, he was saying that to you. In character, I didn't know that. Let's just say I was distracted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <clears throat> Child. Child. That the blade that I requested to be placed on the ground. Stand atop the weapon. Harry stands on top of it. Monarchs. Place yourselves by the Christians and assist me in the process of restoring Calibur to its original state. Be not afraid, child, as this procedure will inflict upon you a substantial blow of pain due to the one that you have made your agreement with. Uh-huh. Oh. I, before walking, before stepping back, I tap Henry on the shoulder and he just mutter, don't die. Hey, he says, I'll try not to. <laughs> And after that happens, that mysterious item that you came into contact with earlier, that I described as being a literal ball of question marks, then appears before all of you, as it is forcefully ripped out of your inventories, and while Henry's is circling around him, in combination with Calibolt, circling around him before Henry himself is slowly lifted into the air. Yashua, yours floats before you and it begins to rotate, and Dreva's slowly begins to crack open, almost as if it were an egg. Now, Henry, I am going to ask you for six constitution saves. Oh no. As once the ladies stand before their crystals, there are beams of light that burst forth from them, and when they make contact with you, it is as if they are searing and burning your skin and peeling them apart cell by cell. As the purification yep. process of Calbon is having a chaotic feedback due to just how cursed that weapon truly, truly was. Ouch. And with each passing second that goes by, you feel as if multiple, multiple millennia of years of time, of pain, and suffering are being experienced all at once and for a second for a very brief second the pain is so severe that you black out from it but the following second Diablos gently swats you on the back of your head Restoring your strength enough to a point where you do not fall unconscious again. But as this procedure is taking place, the markings that were newly adopted upon your face now extend to your arms and your legs. And your eyes become a a lighter shade of red 
and your hair gets just a bit whiter. And yet, when this process ends, and you're standing upon your feet, at some point, you grasped the Khaled bulb and was holding it in your hand as it now looks very, very different. It no longer looks like this cursed abomination <clears throat> of a great sword. It instead looks like a weapon that was originally designed for a a holy knight but has been ever so slightly modified to appear a little bit chaotic yet also refined all at the same time well, like, Dark Divinity? More like... More like a Twilight Divinity. <laughs> and I will put the stats for the new version of Kalenbog alongside an image in the Roll20 chat in just a... Well, not an image, because I can't find a clear one to use, but I will give you this instead. Uh, here. Okay, so... It's not the one with the roots on it, is it? No, it, it it's a completely different weapon. Okay. Take a look at that. Jump to 33 seconds. And I will put the new Kalenbog stats in the chat now. Thirty-three seconds, you said? Uh-huh. Oh, it's the holy weapon. Great sort of divine light. And as, light as for that foreign weapon, well, foreign object, you all, its true form is revealed to be a a clock. Yet this clock has been crystallized in time itself. And while the hands do not move, the longer you hold it, the louder the sounds of a ticking clock ring in your ears, and only you can hear them. However, this is what this item now is. Wait, Twilight Shackles for my Caliburg? Uh-huh. I have to put more stats. Ah! <laughs> I 
Uh, you say that, more. but you're gonna need it. Unship more special. How many weapons do you have on you, Chris? Two. I the use staff. the staff and the Kalborg. Okay. Chrono Crystal. Upon using the item, time stasis will activate, and after using it, you will learn the spell. This only be activated when in or if you hear the sound. I forgot to put battle after in. Nice, I got more HP. So this item teaches us how to use stasis. It doesn't teach you how to do it. It, um... You just automatically learn to do it? It's kind of like, a uh... Osmosis? Is that the right term? You just absorb it? Yeah, pretty much. But it is, as I have described, incredibly context-sensitive. This can only be activated when in or if you hear the sounds of bells. It's my Kelborg attack. Or D16s. Or D16s. Plus strength. Is that physical attack, not magic attack this time? Uh, it is based off of your magic attack. But before, it was based off of physical attack. Because it says attack here. Yeah, I forgot to... Chem attack it? Yeah. A... 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 Four. Well, it's half my MP. Jeez. Oh, Half my MP. One thousand two hundred and seven. Ah. <laughs> Henry's just swinging around his sword. <laughs> Feels <Dang>. more. <laughs> oh, I forgot to put blessed title. I was going to put hashtag blessed. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad it's going in. Hashtag blessed. Let's see how that looks. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, well, my blessed. God. So, I look at the sword, how gleamy and shiny it is, and I whistle. And I tell Henry, you better take good care of it. 
Henry just reminds him, temper. <laughs> temper? I double attack. Riku made a piece. You remember this ability? Rick? Oh yeah. Henry's just gonna go crazy with the sword. <laughs> okay, I have to put in that other ability though. The tethering. <laughs> yeah, Yashua has a concerned look on his face. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Like, <laughs> Twilight Shackles is no damage, but it has effect. I walk up towards uh, Alexander and then I ask him a question, like a, a sincere one. And I just simply tell him, I'm lost What what from what we should do next. There are two Outcomes. Outcome one. You take the sword. Use it to your advantage. And engage in the condoned outlet. And I'll count who is you take this information and you use it to mount an assault against the root of the problem. There are two roads to take. That will greatly alter your story and your future. Yet, the outcome remains the same. The truth will be known for all to bear witness to. The part of the time you the time to collaborate with your team and come to an agreement. I nod. And I, the DM, will be right back because I have to pee really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Commercial break, everyone. Oh. <laughs> While he's peeing, read Twilight Shackle. Cost of 700 MP. You can root an enemy to the space where they reside and force them to, f to fail any saving throws three times. It also puts them in a position where they are forced to tell the truth about any questions you ask. Upon doing so, the spell immediately ends. You can also use this to con to to a conduit to cast dark and light type spells at a higher level plus 50 extra dark and light damage dealt. That's a really great interrogation tool you got there. 
great interrogation tool. Also, I don't have any dark attacks. <laughs> You're useless. <laughs> dark mage with no dark attacks. This is dark magic, but no dark attacks. What kind of black mage are you? I need a mercy black mage spell. <laughs> Uh, Riku's using the bathroom. You could call Alexander a hunk of junk. I wasn't expecting him to use that image, though. That one? No, neither did I. Is there even any dark spells? I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking at the list. I don't see no dark spells. I think he gypped you. <laughs> he gypped me! I have a light spell, though. Yeah, I do too! Cure! No, no, no. I have Diaga. The Dia... 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 <laughs> which gets improved now. The Diaga. Man. Wanna to cast totally. Two more levels. Two more levels. I just wanna learn glare. So I can glare at enemies. Dude, I I have intimidation rolls for that. I don't need them, I just glare. <laughs> Restore our crud. Wait, does, no, that's the damage abilities. You can conduct the cast spells at a higher level. Wait, does that mean even my cure spell gets leveled? I have to ask Riku. There, using this item three times, you could learn the spell time stasis. But we all could get time stasis. Yeah, but it's not a like a spell we could use whenever we want to. There are specific moments when we can. Like whenever you hear the chime of a bell, that's when it's usable. But after three times, you get the spell. Upon using this item, time stasis will activate. And after using this item three times, you will learn the spell. This can only be activated when in or if you hear the sounds of bells. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we have to wait after three times, then we just get time stasis. We don't even have to worry about it. I don't think it works that way. We have to ask Riku. All right. Because how I'm agree. reading it. You back? Uh-huh. So for the Chronos Crystal, after we have to wait three times with the bell. Then after that, we could cast it any time we want. You will find out when that happens. Okay. But you're kind of on the right path. I'll give you that much. I'm just wondering, because after we learn the spell, is there still that mandatory bell ringing? That will be explained at a later date and time. Sounds good. As this is clearly not the normal version of time stasis. Okay. Uh, and my tethering with the twilight shackle. Mm -hmm. I'm not shackled by it, right? No. So I can literally throw people. <laughs> okay, it's not... <clears throat> Excuse me. 
it's not uh that kind of shackle. It's like when you cast it, they just can't move. Because they're shackled to the floor, right? The floor, the air, wherever they are, they're stuck. What so if like, I, so like, what for if example, use... if if some if you're dealing with like a like a flying enemy and it's just flying really 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 fast, and you cast Twilight Shackle and it lands, if they are mid flight, they're just stuck. Ooh, this well, is very and and, and they'll be like chained up and whatever, but they're just stuck. Oh, my battling bees are gonna be very happy with this. <laughs> no, you cannot cast Twilight Shackle on your illusions. No, I'm gonna shackle people and make my bees beat the fuck out of them. <laughs> Step to the wrong neighborhood, fool. <laughs> See a bunch of bees with boxing gloves. Oh, he fucked up. He fucked up. He fucked up. Oh, here beat come the bee Tysons. Beat his ass. Beat his ass. <laughs> it's time for an all out attack. <laughs> Yup. <clears throat> it feels like I'm just the main character from Reincarnated as Slime. <laughs> mm. I'm DLC. <laughs> mm, nah. Oh, it will be. I'm just waiting for those physical form delusions. Dude. No, uh, tr trust trust me. Dude. Rick is going dude. to get something just as powerful as what you just got. Dude. That's fine. I just want to. <laughs> dude, friend. I'm over here thinking, okay, cool. He has a fucking Excalibur now. But, you know, 50 extra dark and light magic. This motherfucker has no dark magic. <laughs> It's so funny because it's true. A black mage are you? <laughs> <laughs> I have light spells though. Does that upgrade my cure spell? No. It says light type spells. <laughs> cure. <laughs> no, no, no. So when I say like as a conduit, I mean like you can. You can swap the stats for no, not not swap. You can add a uh, Khaled Bold stats to a dark or a light type uh, attack or spell type. But since Cure is a healing thing, that's based off of your like your your body's stats. So wait, so it would do example. Say I cast. Daria, this one. Mm -hmm. It would just add 50 damage to it? Yes. No. Okay. Uh, there is like a little bit of a progression thing built into it that I'll tell you about later. Uh, so I'll like the more... Stuff to keep track of. So like the more you use it, uh, the, then you hit the point where you're like, oh, you can... <clears throat> you can use uh, the bonus effect from uh, the blessed version of Calibo to forcefully upgrade Diara into Diaga. So when do I learn a dark attack? <laughs> That's a good uh, question. Whenever you find one or get one. It's a dark mage with no... <laughs> kind of remind you. <laughs> it's a Kurosuba moment. <laughs> <laughs> dark mage with no dark magic <laughs> well no wait that's technically not true you do have dark smoke but it's not an attack so that is a quote dark attack and you have gravity but that's also percentage based that's the only two dark attacks that I could possibly wait. get <laughs> wait is gravity something that he learned or is that part of his uh it's something Skills. he learned. Mm. But you, uh, you don't learn gravity normally. That was my first scroll I ever got. Yep. Mm. Well, we should get a move on. 
We have two paths ahead of us. And I prefer the close and personal one. Henry's still swinging around the sword. Dreva is going to speak up and she says, so you're taking the assault method? A direct approach. Since I'm already aggravated enough as it is by Shinryu. Hmm. Henry puts the sword on his back. Let's go. I didn't test out this baby. Halt. Slow. Slow thy sins down. Young man. You are choosing. And. Setting yourself to the moon. As you put it. A direct approach. Correct. Well, you did say that both both paths lead to the same destination, so... Hmm. Well, well might, as, might as well bring the fight to them. With that having been established... Allow me... Once, Once again, again that, that thy strength. Monarchs, I summon thee. I task you with the challenge of defeating my monarchs in combat. One of which you've already banned. I will move aside as to provide you with ample amounts of space. Wait, hold on. We're fighting all four monarchs? No. And so if you were to do that, you would not survive. Yeah. Instead, you will be fighting monarchs Lin and Quinn. Oh, God. And you will fight them. One time. Yet, Yet, because the space you're in, in, their strength will no longer be restrained. And I will determine when the battle will end when I deem it necessary. Are you prepared? I look at Henry. Are you are you ready to test out that blade of yours? Mm -hmm. I look back at Dreva. Are you ready for a dance? Uh, I, I suppose so, as it is doing part of this line of work, I just uh, wasn't really planning to uh, engage in combat with a god and, well, not so much the god, but his uh, monarchs, as he called them, um... This is going to be a new experience for me, but I think we can manage, though. The thing about their strength no longer being held back has me a little bit 
concerned as well when we fought Lin um the longer we fought the more unhinged she became and I, I kind of shudder when she says that and I do remember her very briefly getting the best of Henry for a second so that kind of has me a little worried Hmm. Well. <laughs> Yashua yeah, just smiles a bit at himself. This life as an adventure is something else. And when you say that. Lin does a very impressive series of flips from her pillar and lands atop the structure that Alexander was previously residing upon. As when she looks at you all, her eyes are already uh, glaringly yellow and it almost looks like the horns on the side of her head have sharpened a bit. And she has that all too familiar chaotic look in her eye as she is more than prepared to do battle. So my caliber counts as a physical attack? Yes. Okay. Can we do pre-setup for going into this fight? Define pre I'm confident we don't need pre setups. I need oh, pre setup. <laughs> Speak for yourself, buddy. <laughs> dude, just. Dude, pretend it's Elden Ring. Just hold the sword in front of you. <laughs> and he starts casting Bumble on himself. Uh, There's no so, time to choke around on this one. As per your question of pre setup, this time I am going to say no. <laughs> as uh, when Lin has all of her weapons circling around her of which I neglected to add in the proper tokens uh, not tokens uh, representations for so give me but a moment as I put these around her You hear another series of mechanical sounds emanating from Alexander. And you also see the other three monarchs have a look of genuine anticipation for what's about to happen as they look all too confident of whatever the outcome is appearing to be and with that having taken place battle will begin wow she prepped <laughs> oh no that stuff was already there it's just in view now do we know her health gauge and all that because i used critical libra last time it is now different. Okay, so I have to recast it. All right. Turn rotation. It is Yashua, Drava, and Hen Yashua, Drava, Henry, then Lin. Wait, how much speed does Drava have? Drava is sitting at... at 152, it says here. That's not correct. That's old. That's old. Oh, you haven't updated it. Okay. Yeah, I didn't update the one on the bottom. Oh, that's not here either. Because I'm at 192. She's at 195. Oh, oh she's 
30 little higher than, than me. Yeah, I'll cast taste. <laughs> All right. And then after that turn order takes place, it will then be Henry, Lynn, Drava, and Henry. Is she really that much faster? <laughs> Lynn's speed didn't change. Everything else changed. Oh, so it's Lynn, Henry, Drava? No, no, it's... It's Henry... It, it's, it's Yashua... So because you all go first, yeah. it's going to be Yashua, Drava, Henry. And after that, well then Lin. And after that, it'll be Yashua, Lin, Drava, and then Henry. Okay. So she's just going to be faster than us anyways. Yes. Well, I'm already faster than her. <clears throat> now even more faster. Whipstream. Alright, hold on, I gotta edit my <laughs> stats now. Are we fighting both her and Quinn at the same time? Nope, oh, you're just fighting Lynn at the moment. I wish I could, like, hit her back with Caliborg. Every time she hits me. Would you care to elaborate on that? If I use this what? with the Caliborg, I wish I could. I never said you couldn't. Can I do that? I never said you couldn't. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I do this, then I will use Libra on her. Updated stats in a moment. Does Libra show her health or no? It does. Okay, so that's Yeah, your Libra is a little different from mine. Mine shows everything. It shows even what kind of clothes she's wearing. <laughs> Bro. All right, chill out. Really? What kind of underwear she's wearing then? <laughs> 10 out of 10 critical Libra. <laughs> At the sheer excitement of fighting, uh, what's her name again? Len. The sheer excitement of fighting Len again. Momentarily, you see like Yashua's, uh, I don't know, form like flicker in and out. You're putting down her. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Big chunky. <laughs> she chunk, all right. <laughs> Two, three, nine, eight. Two, three. Could you display the health bar? Uh, Rick, can you throw so, a shine word on me? I could only use those three times a battle, dude. I like to use them sparingly. I just don't want to get KO'd super fast. You're not going to get KO'd super fast. Remember, we have the first turn. Yeah, but the problem is, remember, she can deep off all my stuff off. That's if she limit breaks. 
kind of think she is. <laughs> well, even if I put a shining word on you, it's going to be useless because it will get removed. <laughs> Not going to waste spells on you. Alright, so let's make things easier for the party. Uh, I did two... Three... Four... And... Five. But... Using special bullets, right? Let's go with... Damn, poison. Light, light damage hurt her? Poison three. That's what I think I remember. She didn't like holy stuff. Okay, so armor piercings using uh two of poison threes, so four poison threes, and this one's using. Hold on, I gotta read. Petal piercer. She has a thousand attack. Fifty MP and five special bullets. Okay. So I'm at 30, 131 poison threes. That I end my turn while defending. All right. Uh, subtract 50 MP, right? Plus 50 to do that. There we go. Oh. Okay. It is now Jareva's turn. And... What damage numbers? Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, you did 2,370 damage. 2,370 damage. Cool. That's 10%, right? Of the limit break energy from that? Mm-hmm. Okay. 2,000 what? 370. So you're getting 237. Okay. 237. Damn, one more turn like that, I get my limit break. Begin her turn with. Let's see here. She is going to cast Patera on herself, on Henry, and Yashua. And then. She is going this to. Target's defense by 50. She is going to cast. Blazara as an AoE around Lin. And then she's going to use Arrow Barrage. But she is going to circle the orbs around Lin before ordering them to strike. In a manner so that she tries to restrict her area of movement, but. Because of the speed difference, gotta play the numbers game to see if there's a hit. So, I have one game, five, and this is for Aero Barrage, and that is not a hit, so Aero Barrage isn't hitting. And because Blizzard was cast as an AoE, uh, subtracting 250 from... Oh, did my math wrong, hang on. Uh, subtracting 250 from 340. Uh, 
Lin is taking 90 damage. And it is now Henry's turn. Okay. Well, I'm going to cast. Illusion level ones and imbue it with blow. Uh, what do you what do you want new illusions to be? Uh what animals do we have this time? see if I have owls. What's the list? Just name off the first, like, four. Well, the way the, um, it's set up in Roll20, it's differentiated by category, and it doesn't, like, just show up as, oh, here's an animal. Um. Uh. I mean, I got like general. I got like owls, dogs, birds. Do dogs. We'll do dogs this time. All right, let's see what dogs I have in here. All the dogs Thank are you. premium assets. God damn it. All of them are. Wow. Yep. Well, all the ones that roll twenty gives me that I don't think I can use. This one looks dope as shit. Though. Will it let me put this one in. Stop. Roll 20 isn't letting me put this one in. Do... So there's a section for birds? Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna go in the search box and punch in birds and it'll give me some... These two are premium assets. Let's put my battling box in B. <laughs> okay. I gotta go. I think they're still here on this one. Yeah, here they are. Copy. Paste. Okay. But do. Bubble for myself. Okay. Then that one is trip. Do another illusion spell. Uh, right. Now view it with cure. Yeah. The only cure spell I have, right? Oop. I think that's wrong. That number. Yeah, it's incorrect. One second. It was two five one five. Two five one five. Sorry, I didn't up that. That's fine. It's supposed to be that number. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Oh. 
put that here so that I don't forget. And then I will use temper on myself. That's three spells. I will do... Do another illusion. Just in case. Oh, not level one. It has to be level zero. I already did my two level one. Level zero with Cure again. Uh, tch -tch -tch. Has to be a tiny bee. Mm -hmm. Little... Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Little baby B Tyson. Little baby B Tyson with a Super baby B Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will do for my last one. I'll get myself ready. Uh, where is it? This one. Okay. That was three illusions. I'm at 21. Ooh. So the pure bees are instructed to heal me when I get damaged, and the slow bee is when she comes close to. Okay. So that being established, Lynn is going to... She's going to look across the three of you very slowly before raising her left hand and using... Stormfall on Drava, and then she is going to. Oh, that! What the fuck was that? And then she is going to use. She's going to activate her her warp driver ability. And then she is going to use... But that's one action, two action. It's going to use Homing Warp on Henry, Yashua, and Drava. So that's one, that's two, that's three. Drava got hit twice, so let me add that up real quick. She warps right in front of me? Not so much as in front of you, but like... Towards your head, like you know the homing attack from Sonic. Yeah, it's, it's that. Can the bee jump in? And explode the slow bee. Mm. Uh, roll dexterity to see if you can command it fast enough. Okay, dexterity. Um. That was too off. <laughs> Critical failure. <laughs> oh. Okay, so you gesture for it, but you were too <laughs> too slow. Okay, which which one of the homing warp hits me? The third homing warp is hitting you. And the first Copy. one's mine, right? The first one is for Drava. The second one is yours. Okay, so... Uh, 
Um. Wait. Uh. Two. Seventy-eight. Um. The bottom number of it. Two. Don't the, forget. I don't see the bottom number. That's 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 what's throwing me off. Oh, you still have dark so, mode on, don't you? Ten thousand and forty-one. Okay. One thousand forty-one. One thousand. Okay, I'm gonna. Fuck, I'm just gonna keep it at light mode. Okay. I... Okay, so. While you all handled that, Drava just took 1,810 points of damage. I took eight hundred. Eight hundred and three. Minus four, one, one. Ow, my feelings. <laughs> my feelings. Nine twelve. <laughs> Pretty good feelings, but. Yes, Riku. My feelings were hurt at a physical level. Damn. Sucks. Damn right it does. <laughs> Bitch is gonna pay. 3,800 is my shield. Leave my HP right there. Three. And Drake Dra Dra got smacked hard. Shit. That was Lin's turn. Mm -hmm. So it's Yasha's turn now? Mm -hmm. Awesome possum. Then it goes Lin's turn again, right? Yep. Oh joy. I'll be back Don't. in a second. Don't worry, I'm uh I'm a I'ma drop her speed. Bam, 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 bam. Sheesh. Uh, with special bullets. Eh. Ice three, why not? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Damn. With ice three bullets. Bullets. Right, you have dealt <clears throat> three thousand eight hundred and sixty-eight damage. How much? Three thousand six hundred and six. I mean, eight hundred and sixty-eight damage. My limit break is done. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I am loving this new rifle. Do you do you have an image for it? Uh, no, I can I can uh, get you one later though. Mm, okay. Well, I don't have it right now. 
uh, I have to show it to you later. It's it's a yeah. I can show it to you after session. I gotta open up uh, Final Fantasy though. Copy that. Okay. With it now being Lynn's turn, she once again has that uh, ever so disturbing look upon her face. As she had originally had her sights set upon Drava, she is now going to turn her gaze towards Yashua. As before she even declares an attack, she is going to motion forward and send some, not all, but some of her weapons to circle around you. the weapons around me. Uh, okay, so there's two behind you, and there's one in front... Yeah, two behind you, one in front of you. Mm -hmm. And they're just like... They're ominously floating in front of you. As they, you know, move around. Ma maneuver around you and all that. And after saying that... Lynn is going to snap her finger, her fingers, and seemingly nothing happens. I am going to ask you for a dexterity save. Okay. The weapon, a... <laughs> I only rolled a two. <laughs> Yeah, you got lucky on that one. The weapon that is in front of you uh, moves on its own, and it makes a beeline for your chest, but you dodge out of the way at the nick of time. However, with the two weapons that are behind you, Lynn has used her warp ability to swap places Oh, 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 I'm, I'm going to move your B right here. Uh, Lynn is using her warp ability to swap places with one of the swords. So she is now directly behind you. Nani? And because of this, she is going to use her crescent sword ability and spin it around her body. That is not the right attack. Roll 20, what are you doing? There we go. And so, and so because this functions as an AoE, well, all three of you are being struck. Yet, With which one? Uh, I'm, roll 20 had a drunk moment and thought I hit Shooting Star, but I hit Crescent Sword. Because of how AoEs work, instead of subtracting, instead of uh, rolling to dodge, you just subtract your speed from the damage roll, and that's what you'll be getting hit by. Or okay. hit, hit four, rather. So the damage roll is 1,029. 1,029 subtract speed, not uh -huh. defense. Uh huh. One. Six seventy nine. Ouch. Okay. Eight thirty seven. I'll do three was real quick. Is being hit for 834. Just Ow. 
Rude. So after performing Crescent Sword, I was three actions because she used one to send the weapons to you, she used another one to swap places with her weapon, and then she used Crescent Sword. He's called Spy now. Yeah. It's called B. Slow B. <laughs> Where's the slow B? Oh, here it right is. Right next. <laughs> All right. Uh... Boom. I was thinking of a name for him, but I drew a blank. So we're just gonna say he like rockets himself towards uh, Lin and disperses when making contact. Blow effect. There. It was 46 with the slow for six turns. All right. Oh. So, so it's minus 20. Okay, so with, with the current uh, speed detriments that Lynn is currently afflicted by her speed at the moment is 170. So she's slower than everybody now. Yep, and that will be reflected in the next set of battle turns. Now as 170. for her, uh, as for her next action, she is going to Use her. <clears throat> She's going to toss a weapon of hers into the air, and when catching it, she is going to decide who to hit. And for that, I'm gonna roll my triangle die. Right, Yashua, God, you have been I can't targeted. hear you roll the die. It's not immersive enough, Riku. What? <laughs> you telling me Discord didn't pick that up? No. Nope. <laughs> Damn, for real? Yeah. Damn. Damn, dude. Reported. Oh, I know OBS <laughs> picked it up. <laughs> uh, uh, since she's slower than us, does she have to roll to hit us? Yes. <laughs> Uh, Yash, we said your speed was 300? It's 350 now. 350. Okay. Uh, uh, Let me just say it missed. <laughs> Wait. Riku, I have a question to ask. It's silly, but hear me out. I'm listening. Blitzstream, can it be can it be stacked at the cost of my defense? Uh, Fuck! Fuck! Um, okay. I mean... Because I'm losing defense every time I use it. If you really want to take that risk... I'm just asking if, if it is a thing I could do. What happens if you're two times faster than the person? Or they're going to have to roll to hit me. Yeah, you still have to roll to hit. <laughs> no, but when the other person's attacking... The person who's two times faster... I mean, if the enemy wants to try and <clears throat> dodge without the use of a reaction ability, they're gonna have to roll for it. If I'm so understanding you, get... you right. No, no. Do you get any benefits from being two times faster than the enemy? Oh, no. No, I'm just harder to hit. That's it. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I'm trying to be a glass cannon here. Uh... Oh, yeah. So Lynn was attempting to strike you, but she missed. So she will instead set her sights upon uh, Drava and attempt to hit her. And no, 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 not Drava, Henry. Uh, I've, I've been bullying Drava enough lately. Uh, what's your Poor speed Drava. again? One. One ninety-two. 192. Uh, okay, you are being hit by uh, 
a point blank. Uh, I'm gonna roll to see which attack this is gonna be. What? He rolled before he even picked the attack. <laughs> Professional GMing, man. Hey, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, I am fully aware. Uh, you are going to be hit <clears throat> by Warp Strike. At half uh, damage. <laughs> Someone's out of shape. So, half damage would be... 525. 525. 1... 14. Would be 4... 615 damage. Oh no, 614. 614. And I will let you all know now that her limit break meter is full. Hmm. See, this is why I, I, I'm not wasting my buffs. <laughs> Let me move my character out of the way quickly. See her HP. Okay. There. <laughs> that was a great hit. You said it was a great hit. <laughs> okay. So it will now be Drava's turn. Sixty percent. What about sixty percent? Taking hit. <laughs> My shields. They're almost gone. <laughs> oh, oh, right, right, right. Uh, Drava is going to cast... She's going to cast Eroga three times to forcefully move Lin away from you all. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then she is going to take flight and use air crash, but not to attack her, but to get away from her. Wow. And then for her last action, she is going to cast... Mm, she's going to cast Ruin. On Ooh, take away her mana. So I'm going to add this stuff up. And also, Lynn has been moved. Let's see, one, two, three. Grab my ruler. Oh, that's not perfect. Fifteen feet adjacent from where Henry is at the moment. Damn. Henry's got a clear shot. I wanted her to stay close to me because I was gonna CQC her. She's close enough from my caliber to hit her, right? Yeah, that's melee range. Okay. Why, Draymond? I was gonna beat her black and blue. Okay, Drava has dealt 2,874 damage to Lin, and Drava's limit break energy is now full. Nice, Sue. Okay. <coughs> wow, Jesus. You okay, <laughs> dude? Now your turn. Yeah, I'm good. Uh. I'm going to cast. Let's see. 
to illusion. Do I do this one with Ruin? Ruin's the one that steals mana back, right? That's Siphon. Siphon, okay. Do I do Siphon? Uh, Two of those. The image to represent Siphon. Uh, we'll use this. After my turn, it goes back to Yasha, right? Uh huh. I cast Temper on Yasha. Oh no. <laughs> Are you sh Okay. I know what I'm gonna do now just because you cast a Temper on me. And I'm gonna cast. Three, uh, two more illusions. So that one's going to be another cure. B. And another cure. B. Henry's going full support. <laughs> more B! <laughs> that was four Bs this turn. Yeah, just summon a whole hive where you're at it. I am. <laughs> as soon as that bubble breaks with her limit break, what are we going to do? What? I have my army set up. Oh yeah, then I want the two big siphon bees to crash into her. Okay. Sure. I want every ready, bud. Oh, sorry. It's just nobody gave me the baton. <laughs> oh, okay. the siphon bees aren't going to blow up right now. Oh, you want to do that now? Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. she's slow. Okay. <laughs> uh. She can't dodge it. <laughs> well, that's not entirely true. That's fine. Let her waste mana. That's the whole point of this. Uh, what is this? Alright, so you command your battle bees to charge forward. All out attack! <laughs> <laughs> Only two of them, it's not really all out attack. I mean, you can do an all out attack with two people in Persona. It's not gonna do a lot of damage, but it still works. Attack! Uh, <laughs> and as a reaction, she is gonna. Do the old blinker rule and completely avoid them. It was more damage than I was going to deal with. <laughs> but she wasted 400 mana. Uh, yeah, but uh, she's been burning MP this whole fight, so she's used quite a bit. I just didn't punch it in till now. I've I've been keeping track of it though. Alright, let's burn her out of everything. <laughs> we learned her strategy last time. I'm surprised you didn't shackle her to the freaking earth yet. She could blink it. And I already know this guy blink that. <laughs> I know Riku, wait. <laughs> 
You want a lot of shackle on the fucking character that could blink. What happens if Yasha Limit Breaks with Temper on? I think Limit Break only works once. I'm talking about the Temper. I think with Temper it only works once. Like, you mean, like, are you asking, like, is it gonna hit twice? Uh. I mean. Most limit breaks, and 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 especially given that you all don't have your upgraded limit breaks, uh, they only hit once. But his armor piercer, on the other All right, so it's my turn, yes? Yes, sir. All right. So what's the turn order this time? It's... Joshua, Drava, me, Lynn? Yep. Until her speed starts coming back, which will be very soon. Which it won't. <laughs> Isn't it? Six turns? <laughs> I'm talking about from the armor piercer debuffs. The earlier oh. ones, anyway. Recast the recast <laughs> Uh, do me a solid. I'm gonna do the. Uh, I'm gonna do some damage to her, but I need some health because I've just been taking her hits without recovering. Can I send one of the little beasts to heal him? Okay. So, what should I do when to you? Your next turn comes around, yeah. Uh, I'll set up some beasts for you too. Yeah, Andreva. My next turn. So Temper allows me to roll twice, right? Attack twice, yeah. Okay. Can he double armor piercer in the same attack? Can you what? Double what? armor piercer. Okay. With Temper. Oh god. What defense is she going to have after this shit? One. Temper. <laughs> One. <laughs> temper. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's ten armor piercings. Seven, eight, eight. nine, <laughs> ten. Oh, oh that's one. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. I'm here what for it. Be that? <laughs> uh, I'm still adding everything up. Give me a second. Can we make it a zero at any point? <laughs> You told me that it, it, it is possible to subtract. <laughs> well, I've never done that far before. You just minus her defense by 100 this turn. Uh, How long does temper last? One, One turn. turn. Okay. So now it's done. Cool. Okay, I do believe this is the most damage you've done the entire campaign so far. Are you prepared to hear how much you just did? If it's over 5,000, I'm happy. 25,000. You no way. have dealt 9,073 damage. Holy shit. You want to temper the next turn, too? <laughs> she must have felt that right there. Oh, she felt it all right. Oh, she felt it in her loin. <laughs> she sure did feel that one. 
as for the first time since you've been fighting her, previous battle included, she has winced in pain. But yet that uh, immediately after wincing, it was replaced by a smile of anticipation. And upon doing that, you hear Quinn chuckle. Very happy that the last shot just happened to be a nat 20. Bro, you, you, got, you got mad lucky with that crit. Because that, cause that was an extra thousand damage. Well, that's the end of my turn. Gaiva's turn. Right. You see, like the barrel, the the barrel of the gun that Alexander gave me is just like steaming. Oh shit! I forgot Drava buffed us the fifty defense. Yeah, yeah. I've already added it on mine temporarily. I didn't. It's for three turns, isn't it? Uh, that would have been more health back. That would have been only like 150 health anyways. It was for... I have to scroll up to see, but it was more than three turns, I think. Okay. Uh, I just... I should have like 150 more health. I just have to be reminded when to remove it. Okay. I got hit three times, 50 to... well, two times. This one was a speed check. So it would have been only 100 more health. Not a big deal. <clears throat> Drava is going to uh, unleash her limit break okay. as she begins pouring energy into her staff as she is going to ring out with arrow barrage well, wind fire ice Earth, lightning, and wind again. With all the elements together, you get Captain Planet! <laughs> hey, Chris, have you seen the video where uh, Don Cheeto, uh uh, dressed himself as Captain Planet? No. <laughs> Fucking funny, dude. <laughs> you know who Don Cheeto is, right? Mm hmm Oh, dude, that was freaking hilarious when I saw him as Captain Planet. Shit was funny. Drava has dealt 4,746 damage. Oh, I whistle. That's gotta hurt. Before, Henry, before you take your turn, I'm going to ask both of you to roll perception and wisdom. Perception and wisdom? Okay. Uh-huh. Perception. Perception. Wisdom. Okay. Henry, you don't see or think anything out of the ordinary that's going on with her. However, Yashua, alongside noticing her not not necessarily ragged breaths from the pain, but from the thrill of battle, you also think for a moment that it's very strange how little she's been blinking to avoid your attacks up to this point. Do I come to a conclusion she's going to unleash something in a minute? Mm, no, you just 
you you take notice of that and you're like that's very strange and out of character for her based off of how your last battle experience with her was mm. that uh now you may proceed with your turn hmm oh be at me to do illusion level one with gravity Ooh, that was close then another illusion level one with siphon Do a mana charge. <laughs> I'll cast Cure on Yashua. How much health are you at? Uh, let me see. How much are you healing me with? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Oh, I want those two bees to slam into her. Uh, which ones? Gravity and Siphon. Which siphon be? You have three of them. All of them. <laughs> okay. Great thing. <laughs> you almost get me to full HP, but good enough, thank you. Oh, no problem. Uh, so she. Where is she uses sidestep, not uh, blink, to. Evade the the gravity bee. I like the wrong thing. But as for the siphon bees, uh, she does blink to avoid those ones. So that's another 600 MP gone. 84. Get rid of this one. And this one. And this one. And I'll cast uh, another illusion with Cure for Dreva and Yashua, whoever is about to kick the can. He'll heal them. Oh, we have a personal medic bee. Well, there's four. Uh, Dreva is the closest to being KO'd at the moment, so I'll just use that one on her. Wait, which which cure be are you using? Because you have four of them. Not the overpowered one, the one I just casted right now. Okay, so not the super heal one. No, the super heal one's for me. Okay. Oh, it's just if I'm going to die. <laughs> that was three, so I'm at
right. This chapter got so spicy, holy. Is that your... Is that your turn? Yeah, that was everything. Alright, give me just a moment to... Uh, do what I need to do. Oh shoot, it's almost 7 o'clock. Remember, we started an hour late. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Okay, so, after all that happens, you see Lin, you see Lin's position of where she's standing, uh, completely changed, in a way, as she sticks her weapon into the ground, and subsequently, all of her other weapons in the area then plant themselves into the ground. She brings her hands up to her chest, almost as if she's about to do a prayer. But yet, when they separate, you see a blue orb of light birth forth from within them. And as she pulls her hands further apart and rotates her arms around her, you can see the very faint outline of the moon behind her. And then after that, you feel a very disturbing chill in the air. And you feel as if something is moving around the area with such... Such an immense level of malice, yet also fueled by inspiration circle around you. Please roll perception to see if you see or hear what is happening. Right. Wow, that was a high roll for me. Nice, sir. Okay. So all of you hear what is happening. And this is the sound that assaults your ears. As the longer the sound goes on, and the chill in the air becomes worse. You look around you to see if you can track the noise, yet as you look around, Lin's weapons begin to vanish, and so does Henry's illusions also begin to vanish. The crystal adjacent to her pillar is slowly absorbed into her body and when the light of that fades away for some very very concerning reason the glow that was circling around Lynn's body has multiplied tenfold and as bright as it is, you can see another figure standing before her. And this figure is a doppelganger of Lynn. Complete, complete, fresh, new body. There is no matter of battle damage or ailments. And it is at this moment that Lynn has casted an ability that she only uses when she deems necessary and has entered into her burst phase. 
And with this, the session will end for today. God damn it! I wanted to fight the double ganger. I hate this freaking to be continued trope <laughs> when the climax just hits. Oh, dude, I love it though. No, you, no, you, 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 you do it to torture me, and I know you like doing that to me. Also true. Anyway, to entry. I'm gonna hit the stop recording button in three, two, one. Irish wallet. End. <laughs>